Hello everybody, my name is Joe Shear, and we're going to be tying a fly today. It's a Salt Strong Special. It's a very simple redfish fly, three total materials. Um, we're going to have our tail feathers, the marabou, and a little bit of flash. So it's real quick, real easy, and it is a producer. And without further ado, we will get started. All right, so today we're going to start with a size 2 hook. Now, any size 2 hook will work. The differences in hook can be the strength, the weight, the sharpness of the point, the length of the shaft, and we're going to be using a size 2 hook. I personally prefer the Gamagatsu SL113H, um, but any size 2 that is not an extra long shank will work. You could use a Mustad 3407. The shank is a little longer, um, but it will work. I also like the Spirit. It's uh, SW07, size 2. So we're going to get started. We're going to start our thread wrap right in the middle of the shank of the hook. And when I lay my thread down, I like to twist it because thread is a ton of tiny little fibers. I want them to be tight, not loose and you're going to start walking it back. Now if you hold this tag at about a 45 degree angle as you walk back, it'll automatically lay those thread wraps down one next to the other. Is that a necessity? No, but uh, I, I just like how it keeps the fly clean. I'm going to stop my thread right at the hook point of the eye. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our tail feathers. These are a medium done tail feather. This happens to be off of a um, Ewing hackle, but it, uh, saddle, but it cape. It doesn't matter what hackles or capes or saddles that you buy, as long as they fit the fly. Now we're going to measure this to be two lengths of the shaft of the hook. So I'm putting this down. There's one length. There's two. Okay. So this is going to stick out of the back of the fly. Now a little higher and I'm going to pinch it. Now I'm going to reach up and s strip the, that, those feathers back. All right. So I have my, the length that I want. Then I'm just going to take the other one since I've already measured this. I don't need to remeasure it. I'll just hold it up to that. I'll see exactly where that comes out, exactly where I want to cut it. Cut that off, reach down here again, strip the feathers off of the quill of the hook and I'm ready to start tying this in all right so it's that easy I'm gonna take one feather to the back side I'll do him first that's the side away from us and you don't really have to put it exactly on the side if it rides on top as long as it as long as the feather lays back all right you don't want it to lay flat I'll try to make it lay flat if I can you don't want it to lay flat you want it to lay on the side all right, so I'm just going to take that, loosely put it in, and kind of hold it, make sure that it's going in the direction we want, and then I'll come back over with a few more solid wraps. Now, you may not be able to tell, but I'm pulling pretty tight on this. I don't want it to come off of that hook. I'm going to take the other feather, line it right up with that, set it on the side. Loosely tie that in, make sure I've got it in the right spot. See how they mirror each other? Now I've got the shiny side of these feathers out. All right, you put the dull side in, the shiny side out. Again, I'm, I'm cranking down pretty good. Thread strength pressure is very important in every fly you tie. So you can see we've got the same length back. Now I'm gonna come forward back to the point of the hook and I'm gonna take a few pieces of Flash. Now this stuff is super fine, okay? It is called the Ice sh ice Shimmer Fringe Ice Dub Minnow Black. I know it doesn't look black. Um, actually, it's also called Pearl Olive UV Blue Black back, as you can see it right there, okay? <clears throat> and I can't tell you how many fibers I'm taking. I'd like to say half a dozen. It's, honestly, it's, it's hard to tell. So I'm just going to take a very small clump, cut them off. Okay, I want them to be slightly shorter than the tail, all right? So I'm just going to lay those right on top here and tack them in, 
a loose wrap to get them started, and then I'll tighten it down, all right? Now, the next piece of material we're going to be using is a marabou, all right? <clears throat> we're gonna take a piece of string marabou. We'll use the amber color, okay? This happens uh, strung marabou amber and this is gonna be our last and final material that we use, okay? So I'm gonna take a very small clump of marabou and, and have it go right over the top of the fly, okay? When I say a small clump, we're gonna make it one and a half hook shanks long. I'm gonna lay it right on top of the fly. I do not want it to go beyond the tail, all right? So I want it to end about halfway down that tail, slightly further than half, perhaps. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put one loose wrap around the top and just hold it there, make sure I've got it in the right position. Then I'm gonna come back with tighter wraps. I'm gonna, that's locking it in place, okay? I'm gonna take my tag end of that marabou. I can use this again, by the way. I'm just gonna put that to the side. And now we're going to hackle on or palmer on the rest of our marabou and this will finish the fly. So what I'm doing here, I'm taking my marabou feather and I'm grabbing it at the tip of the main quill, the, basically the only one coming down. And I'm gonna take that, point those forward, and just lock them in, okay? Just, uh, you can cut off that, what you've got there, stick them forward. We don't want or need it, although we could wrap over it and it wouldn't do any damage. Now I'm gonna take my thread to the front of the hook. The wraps don't have to touch one another. Um, I happen to do that, it's kind of habit. I think it just makes a cleaner fly and I'm just gonna, what they call palmer this forward. And what I'm doing is stroke, stroking those fibers back as I go. Uh, I don't want them laying forward, I want them to actually lay back. So we're palmering forward, stroking the fibers back. We're just gonna come up to the front of the fly. And when we get up to the front, we're going to lock that down in. One wrap around, kind of grab all those fibers, make sure they're going back the way we want them to. I like to twist my thread. You may see me doing that periodically. Like I said, we want those, uh, all those strands to be tight in there. So I've, now I'm gonna pull down with some pressure and lock that in. I'm gonna come back, take my scissors, cut off that material, and for all practical purposes, the fly is done. Now I'm gonna stroke that back and just make a small head, tacking everything down as I go. I don't wanna make this overly large. <clears throat> just holding all that material in. Now I'm gonna take my whip finish tool here. If you've got fibers that are, are kind of floating free, if you just take your fingers and wet them and then grab those fibers and stroke them back, now all of a sudden, they're not, they're not in your way anymore, you know? They've laid down for you long enough to go ahead and whip finish, use your little whip finish tool. And we're 99.9% .9 done. Only two little things to do. Of course, we're gonna cut off our, our thread. And then I like to take a red marker. I, I always like a little bit of color on my fly and I like it to be red whether that gives a, the fish a, a sense of the gill plate or maybe it's injured and that's something that they wanna attack and eat, that's what I'm looking for. Now, the last step is take a little bit of head cement, hold the fibers back, just kinda touch it, it's, it's not a big deal. You don't need a lot of it. That's it, we are done. Here is our redfish, the Salt Strong Special Redfish Fly. You can see that it, it moves really great. In the, any little bit of wind moves that fly. And it's the same thing in the water. A fish can swim by that fly and it will move that fly. So it's really a lively looking little critter.
and it is dynamite on redfish everywhere I've ever fished it. And that will conclude the Salt Strong Special Redfish Fly.